So yeah, the title is not clickbait. I uh, got rejected by National Geographic for one of their Explorer grants. Um, I have had, like no joke, have had a Nat Geo subscription since the day I was born, thanks to a family friend. And I had my pair, like she bought several years of it. And then my parents took over paying for it. And then eventually when I moved out of my parents' house, I continued to pay for my Nat Geo subscription. And I have literally had it since the day I was born. The point being, is that National Geographic was the way I learned about the world. I learned about amazing places, animals, peoples through this magazine over the course of my life. And like every single month, I would like just grab this magazine and was so excited to see all these beautiful pictures and read these articles about stuff that I just could not see. Because like, I'm old enough that like, originally the internet wasn't a thing. So this was how I got my information and I was just hungry for that information, you know? And I love learning, still do, but I learned so much from this magazine and I always thought it would be so cool to like, be in this magazine or involved in this magazine in some way because like everyone involved in it seemed like just proper adventurers. And I wanted to like go on one of those adventures and be able to take those pictures or see those things. And I always thought it would be so cool to contribute to National Geographic. And you know, as, as I grew up, like, obviously that sort of idea went to the back of my mind because I don't know anyone at Nat Geo. I've never met anyone at National Geographic. So how the heck is that supposed to happen? Like, I had no clue how to make that dream come true. So I continued my career as an animator and just kind of pushed that back. And I was always still curious, you know, like, well, how the heck do you like get involved in this? And so eventually I just started like randomly DMing people that were involved in Nat Geo. The question of what's the best way for me to go about getting involved with the magazine or the website or whatever. And after, I don't know, months of doing that, someone eventually like responded to a DM and said, hey, you know, nowadays, probably the best way to do that is with an Explorer grant. And I was like, oh, holy cow. Like one, I had no clue that the grants were available to just anyone. I was like, well, you know, like, I, I don't want to just like try to shoehorn myself in. I, I only want to do this if I can figure out a way that works for me and my skill set and like the stories that I have to tell and I'm passionate about. So I, I went away and for just a few months up until the deadline of like submission this year, I was thinking and writing and brainstorming like, okay, what what can I do that speaks to me and who I am as a person and where I grew up and would also help shine light on something that I think is a really cool thing that maybe other people don't know about. Being from Georgia, I grew up going to the coast a lot and the Golden Isles are very focused on conservation efforts in the whole area and they're also like driven by tourism. One of the biggest focuses that they have that I'm drawn to and everyone else around is drawn to is the sea turtle rehabilitation. I mean, they do a lot of great work for wetlands, marshes, um, you know, just the general state of the beaches and our nature stuff, but the sea turtles are a huge focus. You know, in a lot of places and with a lot of things, 
Conservation and tourism are kind of at odds at each other just by their nature. Conservation gets harder in areas where a lot of people are present because a lot of people just naturally make things tougher on nature and the environment. So they're, they're kind of butting heads a little bit. But the Sea Turtle Center on Jekyll Island has done an amazing job of including the public and tourists in their efforts. So I wanted to make a video about that to show like what the island and the group does to like educate tourists, involve them in finding sea turtle nests and reporting them and like uh, showing them the whole stage of rehabilitation and getting them involved and excited about releasing sea turtles back in the wild that have been rehabilitated and show all the nuance to all the great things that they do to kind of tell their story and educate people that maybe aren't from here about all the great work they're doing and also kind of give a roadmap for other cities, countries, municipalities that may be dealing with the same thing because tourism is just growing and growing and growing every year. And it's always going to be this issue of allowing people to enjoy these beautiful places and animals and, and maintaining them and, you know, being good stewards of that. I thought maybe if I could do that, like tell this story, I could help people have a roadmap for the future and educate them on what was going on now in a really fun and entertaining way with, you know, myself going and shooting everything and interviewing people and then using my, my animated self here in, in a way that uh, explained everything to people of all ages to allow them to understand and care. Because I think people become a lot better and more conscientious tourists if they care about the conservation efforts that are happening. If you go to a place and you feel like you're constantly being yelled at not to do something or just look down on for being there, when you want to come and enjoy this place or these animals or whatever, you're, you're not very likely to help out because it feels like you're being scolded the whole time. But if you can get people excited and caring about this stuff, then, then they will feel a part of it and, and want to help it succeed. And so I, I thought maybe I could do that with a storytelling grant through the National Geographic Explorer grants. But sadly, I was, you know, turned down. And I mean, it's just a huge bummer because I thought I was going to be able to do this awesome project and like create this really cool, entertaining story and make a lifelong dream come true with a little help from my animated self. But, you know, obviously that's not gonna happen. And it's just, like I said, just a huge bummer. But I think we could have made a really awesome film. Me too, we would have crushed it for sure. And definitely brought our own unique style to it. Yeah, I mean, we definitely would have. So what are we gonna do next? Honestly, I don't know what we're going to do next. I, you know, I'm so like trying to prepare for the negative all the time. You know, everyone calls me Eeyore. And for some reason with this one, I had so much hope and I was so excited that I just didn't think it would happen. So, so I don't know what's next story wise. I don't know what's next animation wise, but I, yeah, I just wasn't planning on it not happening. Like I wasn't planning on what if it doesn't happen. I was kind of planning on, you know, how to make things happen once it was accepted. Well, we probably need to come up with something, huh? Yeah, I, I think we just need to work hard and, and make stuff that will continue to entertain and educate and, create a community because that's like, that is one thing that I really wanted to do when I started this channel, like, you know, full force doing the animations and doing like gear reviews and stuff is I wanted to have a way to connect with all of you. I wanted to be able to talk and laugh and joke and uh, 
share common interests. And you know, sometimes when you're doing this, man, it just feels like you are shouting into the void. So, you know, if you guys would continue watching this and enjoying this, but also like comment and like, let me know like about your interests and what you care about. Like, that would be awesome. But yeah, if you guys keep doing that and we can keep growing all this together, like that would be so amazing. But in the meantime, we're really gonna have to come up with something awesome that they're gonna wanna watch. And right now I just don't know what that's gonna be. You know, we're going to the Canadian Rockies soon. Maybe they'll enjoy seeing that. Yeah, maybe they would wanna watch that. I mean, what do you guys think? If we go to the Canadian Rockies, which we're, I mean, we're doing that in a couple of weeks, um, would you guys be interested in seeing that? And is there anything that's like, you know, super cool to see while we're there? Cause we're gonna be in the Kanaskas and Banff area. And if you've been there, like, is there anything cool that, you know, I should see? Or if there's something that you haven't been and you wanna see, like, can I find it and show you guys? Like, I, I wanna make this as collaborative as possible. And I think that would be really cool. But yeah, if you've got any cool ideas, just let me know in the comments. And until then, I'm I'm gonna sit here and try to figure out what's next and and honestly be a little sad because that's okay. Like stuff doesn't always work out and there's not really anything else I could have done. I worked as hard as I could and I turned it in on time. And after that, it just wasn't up to me, but that doesn't mean I don't need to be sad about it because it's a lot of my heart and soul put into that. And yeah, so I'm just gonna be here and be sad and figure out what to do next. And hopefully I'll see you all out there. All right, bye. Say bye to him. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.